In this video, we are going to explore using 7-Zip to encrypt, compress, extract, split, and combine files. 7-Zip is a free program that you can download. The main features of 7-Zip are high compression ratio, it supports a wide variety of file formats, and it also provides a compression ratio that is 2 to 10 percent better than the ratio provided by PKZip and WinZip. It supports strong AES-256 encryption in 7Z and ZIP formats. Let's get started. First, we're going to download 7-Zip from s.etssc.com 7Z. When you arrive at the page, we're going to click Download. Choose 32 or 64-bit depending on your computer configuration. Click Direct Link. Now let's click Run. Click Yes. And we'll click Install. After 7-Zip is installed, you'll have a shortcut to it on your desktop. I've went ahead and opened the application. I've created a folder on my desktop called Secret Stuff that has several different files in it. I'm going to right click on the folder to 7-Zip. We can add this folder to an archive. If we look at the archive we can browse to see where you want to save it. I'm going to choose the desktop. Select Open. From archive format we can choose 7-Zip, TAR, WIM, or ZIP. We're going to leave the default of 7-Z. On the compression if you wanted to upload this file to a web host or if you were putting in storage for archival, you could choose Ultra Compression, which will make the file as small as possible. There's four different compression formats to choose from, LZMA, LZMA2, PPMD, and BZIP2. We're going to leave the default of LZMA. You can choose how many processors you want to use during the operation. The encryption process uses an intense amount of processor resources. We're going to enter an encryption password. Here we can choose the encryption method and the only option available is AES-256. Notice if you change the archive format to zip You'll also have zip crypto as an encryption method. We can also choose to encrypt the file names. After we have our settings selected, let's go ahead and click OK. As you can see, the file names are going across, which indicates the files are being encrypted. It shows the compression ratio, which is currently 101%. The total size of this folder is 284 megabytes. So far the software has processed 80, 44 megabytes and it shows the compressed size. You can also see the speed of which your computer is compressing the files, the number of files that have been compressed, the elapsed time, and the remaining time. You can choose to take the program to the background, pause the operation, or cancel the operation. The window simply disappears after the file has been encrypted. We're going to close the 7-Zip application. Now we have our folder that is encrypted. Let's look at the properties. The size is 273 megabytes. The original size was 284. So with the added encryption, it also has shrunk the file size. Let's try to open the file. You can right click choose open with, choose more options, browse to look for another app on this PC, browse program files x86, 7-zip, 7-zip file manager, click open. 
Now the computer is asking for the password. We're going to use the same password that we used just a moment ago to encrypt the file. You're now able to browse the contents of the directory. I'm going to extract the file so we can see. To extract the file from the archive, we simply drag it out of the folder. The system's decompressing and unencrypting the file. We'll now be able to open the document. Let's go ahead and close 7-Zip to look at some of the other features. We could right click on this file and open it again. Here we could choose the properties. It shows us more information about how it's encrypted, the total number of files and folders, the size. All right, we're done with that. I'm going to go ahead and delete these files. I'm going to open 7-Zip once again. And we're going to work with the secret stuff folder again. Here we can add it to the archive, which we already did. And an archive is the same as encrypting the folder, except you wouldn't put a password on it. We could compress an email. This would compress the folder and then open the default email client to send it as an attachment. You could use 7-Zip to send a secure email to someone. For example, let's take the screen capture file. We could open it with 7-Zip. By opening 7-Zip File Manager, right-clicking on the document, choose 7-Zip, and then choose Add to Archive. When this window appears, you could type a password just like we did before and click OK. Just like in our example before, the new file will appear on the desktop. You could attach that file to an unsecure email message and email the secure encrypted file to the person. You could provide the person with the password and then they would be able to open it. This would be great if you didn't have a FTP server or another means of secure communication. Something else with 7-Zip is you can open .tar or .rar files and recombine them. Let's look at splitting the file. You would want to split a file if you were trying to upload it to an online service that only accepts files such as 5 megabytes. If we had a file such as this one, which is 59 megabytes, we could split the file into multiple ones. To do this, we're going to open 7-Zip, right-click on the file, to split files. If you notice, it says split to. This is going to be the destination directory. We can split to volumes, bytes. The default is 10 megabytes. That would be perfect for our example. Let's go ahead and click OK. The computer is now going to split the file. As you can see, there's now one, two, three, four, five, six files. You can now upload each one of these files and they are 10 megabytes each. To recombine the files into one, you would simply go back into 7-Zip, highlight those files, right click, click combine files. and you would click combine files. You would choose the destination directory and click OK. The file has now been recreated. I'm going to go ahead and delete those.
7-zip also allows you to open ISO files. Let's take a look at that. On our network drive in our software folder, we have several different ISO files. I would like to browse the contents of one. We're going to copy the root directory into the browser window. We can right click on the ISO file, choose open. We're now able to see the contents of the ISO file. That concludes this episode of using 7-Zip. Thanks for watching.